Well, it's Cords and Coffee coming to you from the warehouse. Let me show you a couple things real quick. I was just thinking about it. I need to get this on the old Cords and Coffee. Here's Dan Palin's old Hammond B3 with the Leslie action figures not included. It's a really cool keyboard. Here's Greg. Hello. There's Mike. Hello. Look at these guys working hard. I'm just doing the Cords and Coffee. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Hey, we're gonna play this guitar this morning. This is a Martin Custom Shop D14. Pretty fancy. Speaking of fancy, let's go out here and see what other guitars we got in. And actually, old Josh is over here working hard. Josh, what are you working on there? Yeah, today on the bench, I've got a 2014 Gibson ES335 Studio from Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, that's cool. We doing like a setup, or what do you get? We got going on there. Yep, we're doing a full setup, new strings, making sure that uh, everything's in spec and she plays great when we're done. And you're doing that while it looks like you're plucking a uh, Fender P bass. Yep, we got an American made P bass in there getting plucked up. In Memphis the old pleck machine. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. And then here is everybody's favorite. Best looking man in the Midwest. Boom, that's Nash Smith. How you doing, Nash? What you got going on today? We got some guitar. Lord have mercy. Well, this is a the new inventory. They're getting ready to have their day in the sun. Get some glamour. Is this out. a lefty Martin D41? Yeah, absolutely. Don't say we don't do anything. I was going to say, yeah, left-handed folks, rejoice. We got a LSL. This is a bad bone with a humbucker in the neck. And then, look, here's a, two humbuckers there. I love opening guitars. It never gets old. And then, I know, this is the nitrous cellulose. It's just... I've <sighs> got some tailors. What else we got? A bunch of boxes. Got a bunch of stuff. So today, I thought it would be cool if we were to look at some tunes, look at some new ways to play, some old, familiar chords. I've been doing a lot of interviews here lately, and I thought it'd be good to get back to basics for a second and just actually do some chords on chords and coffee. So we're gonna sneak in Quinn's office one more time. I got this new apparatus to help hold my phone. Let's see, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but I do this on my phone, not super fancy. How's that look? Let's straighten that out. There you go. Take you a quick drink. I like to show the logo, but I have to do that with my left hand. All right. Some familiar voicings or familiar chords with different voicings. Look at that. D14. Custom shop. Lord have mercy. Quinn, if you're watching this, I promise I will not put any pick marks on this guitar. I don't know how that's translating to the phone, but this thing sounds magnificent. So there's a little something right there to make you feel my love. You know that song? Bob Dylan? Every now and then you might hear the air compressor kick on for what Josh is doing out there. But hey, I just thought it'd be kind of cool. I was just thinking about that song this morning. And when I play to make you feel my love, I'm playing some pretty basic familiar chords, but sometimes you can spice up a chord by leaving some notes out, right? And also just moving around some familiar shapes can yield some interesting voices. So get your guitar tuned up, get it out, and let's go over this. I wanna show you this first part to make you feel my love. If you listen to the Adele version, I think it's been a while and I've, and I've played this and uh, uh, my wife is a phenomenal singer and then she has a friend named Marianne Martinez who's a great singer too and Marianne and I, um, Jess, my wife Jess and Marianne have sang a lot together and um, 
back when my wife and I were worship leaders in a church in Columbia, Missouri, a church called Revolution Church, which is still going strong. Um, Mary Ann was a very integral part of that. And so um, Mary Ann really does a beautiful job singing this song. And she would do the kind of the Adele version, which I believe is in B flat. And I would just capo on the third fret and play these same voicings. But even if you do that in B flat or you do it just in G, um, it's a beautiful tune to make you feel my love. There's a Bob Dylan version, that's who wrote it, and then there's the Adele version, and then there's a Garth Brooks version out there floating around from the movie Hope Floats, I think. Sandra Bullock, Harry Connick Jr. He built houses, but took his time, did it slow, which is how we do it on chords and coffee, right? So when I'm playing this tune, right there out of the chute, I'm playing a G chord, that, and even if you don't like this song, there's some nuggets in here, so just stay with me, okay? It's a beautiful song. You ought to like it, though. All right. Middle finger, third fret of the low E. Not playing the A string. Ring finger, third fret of the B. Okay? And I'm playing uh, from the low E. You know, I'm hitting the A string, but nothing's happening because my, uh, my middle finger is just dampening that. And I'm playing that D note there on the B string, so I'm not playing the high E at all. That's the melody note. Well, and then I come here and I pull off the first fret of that B. Now there's a, a D over F sharp. Index finger on the second fret of the low E. And then middle finger on the second fret of the G. And then pinky on the third fret of the B. You could use your ring if you wanted to, but for whatever reason, I, I don't know if it's even technically right, but I like my pinky right there and it feels comfortable to me. But you could use your ring and you could also, you know, extend your pinky up here to the fifth fret on the high E, but this is the way I'm doing it. And I am kind of sliding into that. And the melody then is on the B string, third fret, just like we were before, and then second fret of that G, so. And you can do a little pickup right here. And what's cool about this is that, and that little pickup, by the way, which is uh, open D, second fret of the D, and then a G string. And then sliding up this thing which is exactly like what we were just at that uh, D over F sharp but now we're doing an F natural in the uh, first fret on the low E and then the pinky is on the third fret of the B again and then I've got a D and a G string open so it's almost like a it's almost like a, a G with no third over F and so you could look at that as it's almost like a G7 with no third with, you know, with the uh, flat seven in the bass, or you could think of it as, the way I think of it, it's just G over F, because I feel like that kind of outlines the chord, what's happening there better, especially, you know, if you were playing that somewhere else, you know, um, there's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. That's it. Yeah, so like G over F is what it feels like, yeah. So one more time. Same deal here is I'm on that D on that D note on the third fret of the B, and then coming down here and pulling off first fret, and then to C, good old cowboy C, index finger on the first fret of the B, open G, middle finger on the second fret of a D, and then ring finger on the third fret of the A. And sometimes I'll add this little embellishment here. And that little it's just, um, so I'm strumming through, plucking on the B string with my right, uh, with my right hand, with my middle finger. And hammering on the third fret of the B, and then opening, and then plucking again that D note, third fret of the B, and then first fret of the B, and then off, so open B. Boy, that chord right there. 
So that is a C minor six. You've got your um, ring finger on the third fret of the A, still holding strong on that C. And then now index finger comes to the first fret of the D, so on that E flat, so the minor third. And then your middle finger hits the uh, second fret of the G string, so there's your six, the A, and having the major seven in there. So what is that? So is that like a C minor six major seven? Or somebody comment below, because that, that chord right there, um, I need some buddies here that are watching Chords and Coffee, some Chords and Coffee family that would weigh in on how would you name that chord? I mean, um, you know, a it could be, there's a such thing as a minor major seven where you have a minor chord with a major seven. You know, if we're doing Stairway, that second chord, and I'm in C minor, I'm not in A, right? But just to keep it that sound right there, or like when you're doing like a salsa thing or Latin, that kind of, that sort of maneuver where you have a minor chord that has the major seven in it, you call it a minor major seven, right? It's a mouthful, but that's what's happening. So it's, all, it's almost like a C minor major seven with a six. Maybe that's how to say it. Nonetheless, it's a really beautiful chord that demonstrates lots of tension. And when the release comes, it's really beautiful. So. Now right there, after that C minor major seven thing, sometimes I'll go. And this is, uh, it's almost like a classical maneuver here because I've got my middle finger, or my ring finger on the third fret of the low E. And I'm playing just the G string and the B string. And then I'm doing that same D over F sharp What's happening is is I'm creating this counter melody because while this guy is going down eventually to E, this guy is going up. Like that. So this G, this one finger G to this D over F sharp again with index finger on the second fret of the low E. Um, the uh, middle finger is on the second fret of the G. And then pinky, just because, I don't know, it just feels good to me, is on the third fret of the B. And then, honestly, I'm not even playing anything. I'm just playing this low E note, and I'm playing the top two strings. So an E and a B. But you can also just play an E minor chord right there. And then the C sharp minor seven flat five. Sounds like a mouthful, but it's an easy grip. Index finger on the fourth fret of the A. Ring finger on the fifth fret of the D. Middle finger on the fourth fret of the G. And then pinky's on the fifth fret of the B. And stay with me on this. It's gonna look stretchy, but it's not that bad. So. It's a little stretchy. So you got pinky's gonna go from the fifth fret to the seventh fret and then to the eighth fret, good lord, and then slide up to this little thing here. And that's index finger on the seventh fret. Oh, by the way, so uh, this is all in the B string, this little walk up. So five, seven, eight, and then index finger on the seventh fret of the G, and then pinky slides up to the 10th fret of the B to sort of complete that little melody there. And that's just something that I, I made up. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it, obviously. Second ago, when I went, 
I actually took all my fingers off and just played um, the index finger on the fourth fret of the A with with the open G string and then the pinky on the same G notes on the eighth fret. Because really what's happening, that C sharp minor seven flat five is literally just an E minor with C sharp in the bass, right? And when you think about it like that, it's actually a pretty easy chord and it's a beautiful chord too. I love a minor seven flat five chord. There's a lot of application. In fact, I think we talked about that in a few chords and coffees past, but if that doesn't sound familiar to me, comment below and I'd be happy to revisit that. So that is a first verse to make you feel my love. If you would like me to continue to unpack that song, please comment below. And as always, if you want a chord chart to that, shoot me an email, Nate White, N-A-T-E-W-H-I-T-E at palinmusic.com. And that's P-A-L-E-N music.com. Okay. Everybody good so far? No chords and coffee. All right, so, you know, a lot of those grips are not even full chords. And I wanted to give you just, you know, with that, you know, that's a little, I mean, there's some complicated stuff in there, but you can do it. It's easy. You just got to mess around with it just for a little bit. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's not too bad. But also, did you know that you, know, you can move around? His voicings. I remember there was a song called Big Empty by Stone Temple Pilots from the Crow soundtrack, and it had this where they were just moving a G chord up from like the regular G position, starting on the third fret, moving it up to the fifth fret, and then moving it up to the eighth fret. So sort of doing less G A7 to C. And that was the first time I remember as a kid, you know. It was MTV Unplugged when they did that, which, man, raise your hand if you'd love for MTV, A, to play videos that are about music again, and then B, to do the Unplugged thing, because it was awesome, because it was a really cool way to hear a song, like, stripped down to its acoustic essence. And I remember watching um, Dean DeLeo play that and going, oh, my gosh, that's amazing, because I never thought about moving the chord around. And then there was another guitar player that played with him, because... The thing about Stone Temple Pilots is they had a lot of really cool, intricate guitar parts. And especially on acoustic, it would have been very difficult to accomplish all of that just by himself. And so they brought this other guy. Comment below if you remember his name. Um, I know it's a Google search away, but that guy was awesome. And speaking of um, Dean DeLeo, um, if you haven't checked out him and Tom Bukovac's project called Trip the Witch, um, I don't know the reference to that name, but I do know that album has some gorgeous guitar music. Super chill, super beautiful. Like it is an encyclopedia Britannica of just really righteous tones and just great guitar parts, really cool, beautiful chords. So um, Trip the Witch is the name of it and it's on Spotify, it's on YouTube. So go listen to that if you haven't. There's some really cool stuff on there. Anyway. Um, Moving some chords around, like as a for instance, good old cowboy C like we did just a second ago. You know, speaking of the key of G, you know you can move this chord up here to where you're making this C chord with your index finger on the eighth fret of the B string, open G, middle finger is gonna be on the ninth fret of the D, and then your ring finger is gonna be on the 10th fret of the A. Now, that E note is, putting it a little too much in G6 land, and if you're wanting just a straight up G, well, take your pinky and put that on the 10th fret of the high E. Now you've kind of got this sort of mandolin -y, kind of bluegrassy moment with this G chord. Yeah, try that. And so even if you're doing like a simple G, D, E minor, C, if you were going... kind of a fun little trick and also a way to spice up pretty familiar chord progression right just take this c shape here and for the d all i did 
is I went down to this shape here, and you kind of know this already, even if you don't think you do. Uh, ring finger is going to be on the ninth fret of the A on that F sharp. Uh, index finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the D, and then an open G. So really, we're making kind of a D sus four because of that G rubbing against that D. It's a D over F sharp with a suspended fourth. So you get this tension here. The F sharp and the G, but it's okay because your ear loves it because we're hearing all these pedal tones. What's a pedal tone? Well, we're hearing these tones carry over to each chord, this D and this open G. And so because that real strong root five relationship is going to be carried over, your ear accepts all that tension of this next chord. So listen. And then I went to this E minor. Think of this as just good old Doobie Brothers. Right? But instead of making a bar, index finger is going to be on the seventh fret of the A. Ring finger is going to be on the ninth fret of the D. G is open again. And then middle finger is going to be on the eighth fret of the B, which is a G note. And those two octave Gs next to each other sounds really nice. And then with that D back on top. Very mandolin -y. So you've got. Now, what do we do when we get to C? A couple different options. One is right from this E minor 7 that we got going on here. Just take, leave this um, middle finger right where he's at on the 8th fret of the B. And then now just take your index finger and put it on the 8th fret of the low E and then have all these open strings just jangle away. Or if you wanted to, you could put your ring finger down on the um, ninth fret of the G to reinforce that E. But I think leaving that G string open is probably where it's at, just to keep that those pedal tones persevering through all those chords. Now, surely to goodness, you're playing a song somewhere in front of people, or maybe you're just writing something where you've got the G, the one chord, to the D, the five chord, in this case, D over F sharp, to the E minor, the sixth chord, and then to the four chord, C, right? Very common chord progression. In fact, if you haven't seen the uh, uh, Axis of Awesome, where they go through and they do all the gazillion songs that have that same general chord progression to it, it's kind of funny, you should YouTube that, but it's really common. Our ears like it, Western music likes it, pop music like it, you know, uh, singer-songwriters like it, but there's a fancy, easy little way to kind of spice that up. And all I'm doing is I'm adding a couple pedal tones and I moved everything up. Would I do that if I was playing that by myself? I might. Because then after you do that... And you go to the more of the standard chord positions, chord grips, the, the normal stuff. It kind of reinvents that now in a new light. And presents it in a way where that old familiar stuff is refreshing. And... That's pretty cool. And in fact, you know, there's a life lesson in there somewhere, I'm sure, about context, you know, uh, sort of representing what was once, you know, kind of, eh, you know, maybe blase, kind of normal stuff. And all of a sudden now it's new and exciting again because it's in a fresh context. So take that for what you will. You guys like this kind of stuff. I've been doing a lot of interviews here lately. A lot of interviews, and I'm really enjoying that, and I've got more coming. So if you love that, stay tuned. I've got some really exciting interviews coming that I'm really, I'm really pumped for you to uh, hear what these folks have to say. But in the meantime, one of the ways that you encourage me and help me is to let me know content-wise um, what you're looking for and what helps you the most. So I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your direction for Chords and Coffee because we're in this together. And who are we? Well, I'm going to tell you. We're the most encouraging group of guitar players on the internet. We encourage one another. We encourage other folks. We encourage folks to play guitar, and we also just encourage folks to um, see each other and live and exist in our best possible light. 
So I appreciate y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next week for another Chords and Coffee.